How relaxed are you about the election? Well, I think it's an unprecedented situation that it's so unclear at this stage. I don't think that that has ever happened before in France, that we have had that kind of uncertainty. So that's, of course, an issue for the markets in and of itself. But to me, the big issue is actually the legislative elections in June and the, the very fundamental question of how whoever gets elected in the presidential elections will be able to govern and what kind of coalition that person might be able to put into place. In a sense, it's a bit similar to the U.S. Uh, and many other countries actually uh, around the world where we see diminishing political majorities and therefore diminishing legislative capacity. And I fear that that is going to be the outcome also for France. But there are some countries, and I'm sure Matt would make this point, there are some countries that seem to manage very nicely with a number of fragmented parties, or at least they, you know, they manage, their economies manage to grow pretty nicely. Um, so, so what's the fear in the French case? Well, it's hard to know how, again, these people will be able to, whoever wins, basically, how they, how the coalition, what the coalition will look like. Uh, perhaps Fillon is uh, the less uncertain person in that context, but we clearly don't know what a Macron coalition will look like. And, uh, and the National Front only has two deputies in the National Assembly in France out of a bod in a body that has 577 seats, right? So. That looks like a, a, an arduous task for them to try to get a governing majority into place. Okay, Matt, jump in. M Murray, it makes sense longer term. Uh, of course, if we had a surprise on Sunday and we got a Le Pen Mélenchon uh, runoff into the second round, wouldn't that um, spook markets and, and throw everything off? I'm, I'm sure that would have a, a great uh, impact on market volatility, on on you know as it occurs but I nevertheless insist on this fact that whoever becomes president has to be able to form a government and and that is where we will have the power of uh, the f French system in the future so if we have difficulties forming government under any president then that's that's in a sense the saddest uh, element of this whole story is that there's a reasonably high probability that it will be a, a, a weak government and therefore fewer structural reforms arguably and uh, in the longer run then less GDP growth. That's sort of how one can Mur see it panning out. Marie, we talked about this as unprecedented at the top of the show. Um, do the French see it that way, especially consumers? I mean, is, there, is the uncertainty stopping them from going out and spending? No, I haven't uh, seen any real support of that. On the contrary, you know, the European economy in general, and uh, including France in this case, is uh, holding up very well. And indeed, it is private consumption that has been driving uh, Eurozone and French uh, GDP growth uh, I I the last couple of years. So, uh, so that's still holding up uh, surprisingly well, perhaps one could argue. Uh, Marie, how does the ECB navigate this busy political calendar? We got a story contrasting some of the comments from the Governing Council this morning uh, around whether the risks are still tilted to the downside. Yes, I mean, I, I think we definitely have a, a huge story coming to the markets on this score going forward, meaning that we know that central banks are now uh, at various uh, it, not everybody at the same rhythm, but everybody is preparing for removing some of this liquidity that they have been so generous with since the 2008 crisis. So exactly when this will become a, a withdrawal, a net withdrawal of liquidity from the world economy, mm. we don't really know. But sometime in 2019, this could actually happen. 